Despite its large population and range, the leopard seal is an elusive species. Its tendency to spend much of its time underwater in the most remote Antarctic regions of the world makes the animal difficult to track and study. Limited human interaction has led to a minimal and largely negative portrayal in human culture, which is why you may only know this animal from its appearance in the 2006 film Happy Feet. The anatomy and behaviours of the leopard seal are as unique as they are terrifying, and yet the species isn't as feared as many other marine predators. Don't worry, my goal here isn't to give you a phobia, but I reckon that this species is underrepresented in human culture, and that's why I'd like to talk to you about them today. The leopard seal was first ranked in 1820 by the French zoologist Henri-Marie Ducreté de Blainville. Blainville was a taxonomic authority on a number of species throughout his life, but he is most notable today for coining the term paleontology. But back to the leopard seal, he gave the species the Latin name Hydroga leptonix, with the first word Hydroga meaning water worker, while leptonix translates to thin clawed. In English, the animal is rather uncreatively, named after the leopard due to the similarity in its black spotted coat. The leopard seal is what we would refer to as a monotypic species, meaning that it's the only member of its genus. To find its closest relatives, we need to broaden our focus a little bit to its tribe, Lobodontini. Collectively known as the Antarctic seals, this tribe comprises of just four species. Along with the leopard seal, they include the crab eater seal, the Ross seal, and the Weddell seal. These four are the most abundant group of seals in the world, with the crab eater seal in particular numbering as many as 30 million in global population. These guys are thought to have diverged from elephant seals during the late Miocene, which was a geological period that ended 5.3 million years ago. The leopard seal then began to emerge in the following area known as the Pliocene, meaning that the animal has been on the face of the earth for around 4 or 5 million years. Just to put this in perspective, humans, or specifically Homo sapiens, evolved from our ancestors less than 300,000 years ago. But despite these factors, Antarctic seals are among the least well studied of the world's seals. And the reason for this is their habitat. These animals live almost exclusively on ice in some of the most remote parts of the Earth, which makes collecting data on them especially difficult. Compared to other seals, leopard seals have a distinctively long and muscular body shape, ranging in length between 2.4 and 3.5 metres, or 7.9 and 11.5 feet. But while they appear quite slender, keep in mind that this size brings with it a weight of up to 590 kilograms, or 1300 pounds. This comfortably places them as the third largest seal in the world, with only elephant seals and walruses outdoing them. Notably, however, those guys aren't nearly as fast, thanks to being over twice as heavy. While elephant seals and walruses can both reach a top speed of about 10 kilometers or six miles per hour, leopard seals can use their unusually large front flippers to repel themselves at speeds of up to 40 kilometers or 25 miles per hour. This puts the species in the range of a number of sharks in terms of swimming capability, which makes them a large threat to the animals it considers its prey. Thankfully for us, Humans are typically off the menu due to a great number of factors, but I'll get to that a bit later on. The leopard seal is perhaps best known for its massive jaws, which are distinctive in shape from any other seal species. One trait it does share with the crab eater seal is that its molars can lock together in a way that allows the species to sieve krill from the water as it swims. Meanwhile, being the only predominantly mammal eating seal, its front teeth are sharp and pointed. As a member of the family Phocidae, the leopard seal is classed as a true seal, meaning that it lacks external ears. Instead, the species possesses an internal ear canal that leads to an extended opening. In the air, this hearing has been documented to be comparable to humans, but it is believed that they find the most use of their internal ears underwater, where it is utilised in conjunction with their sensitive whiskers that help the seal track movement when looking for prey. This factor of evolution is believed to be a result of streamlining, as members of this family are distinguished by their more aquatic life when compared to otterids, or eared seals. While making them more adept at hunting while in the water, leopard seals tend to have a lot more difficulty manoeuvring themselves on land, which results in this kind of slow, lumbering movement 
common across earless seals. Like other Antarctic seals, the leopard seal is covered in a thick layer of blubber that helps it keep warm in those below zero temperatures. This blubber holds a second purpose in helping further streamline the seal's body, as a layer of fat smooths over its otherwise bony physique. Given a healthy life, leopard seals can live up to 26 years on average, which is fairly typical when compared to its closest relatives. Behaviour-wise, leopard seals are notable first and foremost for being extremely vocal animals. The males in particular employ a unique mating strategy that relies on a variety of calls, which it uses throughout their summer breeding season. Being in the southern hemisphere, this period falls between November and the first week of January. During this time, males will hang upside down and rock side to side while under the water while producing loud calls of up to 177 decibels for many hours each day. These calls can range from territory marking to attracting a mate depending on the variation. But due to the sparse environment and low population density, males often struggle to find a partner during this time. Female leopard seals produce far less noise by comparison, with most of their calls being specialised to gain the attention of their pup. Speaking of pups, we should get into the leopard seals' breeding habits. Now this is an area that we have very limited information on, because Antarctica is a difficult region for humans to live in for any period of time. Documenting and studying breeding and gestation behaviours in these animals requires monitoring over a period of months, a task both extremely difficult and expensive. This means that some of what I'm about to say may sound a bit vague or incomplete, so keep that in mind going forward. What we do know is that the leopard seal's breeding system is polygonous, meaning that males may mate with a number of females during the summer. Females are typically active from three to seven years old and give birth to only one pup over the summer. After conception, a female's gestation period lasts on average 274 days, just shy of that of humans. When reaching the end of her pregnancy, a female will dig a circular hole in the ice as a temporary home for her pup before it is able to swim and hunt with her. At birth, a newborn pup typically weighs a whopping 30 kilograms or 66 pounds although they will grow to be 20 times that size by adulthood. While they're not great divers compared to other seals, leopard seals are able to hold their breath for up to 15 minutes while hunting underwater. As much as 70% of an adult leopard seal's diet comes from krill, but research shows that juveniles don't eat krill at all during the winter months. This is because their dives are limited to around only 7 minutes, which isn't enough to reach krill during this time, as they are found at deeper ocean levels throughout the colder months. This limitation may occasionally lead to cooperative hunting, where other leopard seals, typically the mothers, aid the juvenile in hunting prey closer to the surface, such as Antarctic fur seal pups. Adult couples have also been witnessed cooperatively hunting, although again, the data here is especially limited. But despite this occasional interaction, leopard seals are quite antisocial animals, as the males have no part in raising the pup after conception. This leaves the females to rear the young, although they are usually only with their mothers for a month before they are weaned off and left to fend for themselves. About a quarter of leopard seal pups don't see their first birthday. But if they can survive their first few years, juvenile leopard seals will eventually be able to dive deeper than 80 metres or 262 feet in search for food. Given that leopard seals are mammals and therefore can't breathe underwater, they are only able to complete these dives by first collapsing their lungs and reinflating them at the surface. Their bodies are also purpose-built for this kind of behaviour, as they have a reinforced trachea to prevent collapse at great depth pressures. The diet of the leopard seal is quite varied and changes throughout their life. Juveniles feed on krill when available and supplement this with squid and fish. But by adulthood, these animals need more substantial prey to feed themselves and will readily hunt king, Adeli, Rockhopper, Gen 2, Emperor, and Chinstrap penguins. And while penguins make up the majority of the leopard seal's diet, they also prey on other seals, including members of their own tribe. Remember these guys? The leopard seal has been documented eating crab eater, Ross, and Weddell seals on occasion, which is a rare case of inter-tribe hunting that we don't see too often across the animal kingdom. This wide variety in prey is largely down to the seal's jaws, as it's purpose-built to be able to both filter krill and crush bones with its teeth. 
This adaptability has rendered the animal a mainstay in the Antarctic ecosystem, although the leopard seal doesn't quite hold the status of an apex predator, as they are hunted on occasion by orcas, otherwise known as killer whales. Shark bites have also been seen, but the extent of this animal's interactions with sharks is largely undocumented and likely quite limited. Needless to say, depictions of leopard seals are severely limited in human culture. As the species largely lives in Antarctic regions, humanity has had very little interaction with it. The seasonal population of Antarctica itself ranges only between 1 and 5,000 people, comprised mostly of researchers. But in recent years, we have seen the animal portrayed in a number of films. Unlike other seals, the leopard seal almost always occupies an antagonistic role which is fairly typical for a predator such as itself. We see leopard seals in Don Bluth's The Pebble and the Penguin, Penguins of Madagascar, Eight Below, and most notably in Happy Feet and its sequel. These characters are linked in that the animal is consistently portrayed as a bloodthirsty killer of few words, which is ultimately a fair depiction considering that our heroes in three of these four films are penguins. But undoubtedly, this portrayal has shaped human perception of this animal. And given the leopard seal's intimidating size and speed, surely they pose a threat to humans, right? Uh, not really. Again, limited interaction. The number of cases where leopard seals and humans are in such close proximity are limited. When humans do interact with this animal, however, the results can be mixed. Aggressive behaviour, stalking and attacks have all been documented, beginning over a century ago. During Sir Ernest Shackleton's Imperial Transantarctic Expedition of 1914-1917, Thomas Orr de Lees was chased by a leopard seal when the expedition was camping on the sea ice. Due to their slow speed on land, he was able to keep his distance long enough for fellow explorer Frank Wilde to shoot the animal. In 1985, Canadian-British explorer Gareth Wood was bitten twice on the leg when a leopard seal attempted to drag him off the ice and into the sea. He was only saved when his companions began to kick the seal with their spiked boots. And as recent as September of 2021, three spear fishermen encountered a leopard seal offshore of Simonstown, South Africa. The seal attacked the men and continued to harass them as they swam back to shore, inflicting multiple bite and puncture wounds. Now, these are bad, but still exceedingly rare in the grand scheme of things. Three major attacks over an entire century isn't really to a level we should find concerning. But it is important to recognise that these animals are aggressive and can be lethal, as we learnt in 2003. At the South Cove, near the UK's Rothera Research Station in Antarctica, a biologist was killed by a leopard seal while snorkelling in the water. The animal had grabbed her by her head and neck before holding her underwater for six minutes at a depth of up to 70 metres, or 229 feet. While she received a total of 45 separate injuries from bite wounds, the coroner recorded a verdict of an accidental death caused by drowning due to a leopard seal attack. At the time of recording this video, this is the only known death attributed to the leopard seal. And while this event is tragic, it's important we recognise that attacks like these are not done out of malice. Like many sharks, attacks on humans by leopard seals may be cases where they assume we're fur seals and hunt us as they would them. In a few other cases, the animal may have felt threatened or attacked in self-defence. Due to their size and remote distribution, these animals are almost never kept in captivity. A leopard seal named Casey was held in Taronga Zoo in Sydney from 2007, after being found washed ashore, emaciated and with a shark bite. He was nursed back to health, but kept at the zoo due to fears that he may transfer diseases to the wild leopard seal population if he was released back into the ocean. During his stay at Taronga Zoo, Casey was the only leopard seal in captivity in the whole world, and since his passing in 2014, we haven't seen another one. But in the year previous, Casey was serenaded with a saxophone of all things, and I'll leave a link to that full video in the end cards. Would you be shocked if I said Antarctica? Leopard seals, along with the rest of their tribe, are referred to as pagophilic or ice-loving seals. 
These animals primarily inhabit the Antarctic pack ice, which is a term we use when drift ice is driven together into a large single mass. This environment and the water beneath it are where leopard seals will spend most of their lives, although they have been sighted in other regions. New Zealand receives a good deal of the visitation due to the island's relative proximity. Individuals have been spotted even on the foreshores of major cities such as Auckland, Dunedin and Wellington. South America, South Africa and parts of Australia have also had their sightings, but barring that one attack in Simonstown I mentioned before, most of these have been fairly brief. Even still, the vast majority of leopard seals remain solitary throughout their lives, and it's typically only mothers and their newborn pups that may be found further north in sub-Antarctic islands during the winter. This is when they're most likely to be seen on the coastlines of human-occupied regions. Now, onto the population. Unlike my last video on the ring-tailed lemur, there isn't much reason to be concerned about the leopard seal just yet. Current estimates say that between 200,000 and 440,000 individuals may be found in the wild today, which is a range substantial enough to place the animal as least concern on the IUCN red list. Unlike many seal species, the animal has never been systematically hunted by humans, and this is largely down to their remoteness and aggression. Direct human impact is extremely limited, and a quota is already in place that limits harvesting of the animal to no more than 12,000 individuals per year. Currently, no known organisation has actively hunting the animal, meaning that it's unlikely that even a dozen leopard seals are being killed by humans each year. However, we've got to bring it back to the lack of data. The population trend of the leopard seal is totally unknown, which is a bit alarming as it means the species' future remains uncertain. While there's an abundance of leopard seals in the Antarctic, they are incredibly difficult to track by traditional visual techniques. This is because they spend so much of their time underwater during the spring and summer, when these surveys are most often carried out. When we compare this animal to the many other species that are faring far worse, it's tempting to say that the species is thriving. That may be the case, but without the proper research we can never be certain. Most notably, the species may be at serious risk of habitat loss, as the polar ice caps diminish with global warming. So long as this trend goes undocumented, this species could be plummeting in global population right under our noses. For that reason, I'm going to point you towards the Antarctic and Southern Ocean Coalition, or ASOC, who are one of the leading voices in the preservation of this region. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below, which contains some great research that was used in writing this video. Thank you for watching. While I hope that this was interesting, I strongly suggest you do your own further research in this field, maybe starting with ASOC. In future videos, I'll start setting up polls for people to vote on what animal I should cover next, but until there's an audience for it, I'll just pick it myself, I reckon. That being said, Next time, I'll be talking about an animal less than 1% the size of the leopard seal, the tiny Mexican dog known as the Chihuahua. That video will be out in three weeks, so if you're interested in it or feature stuff, you can subscribe and I'll see you then.